Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on network security or information security and in this video tutorial we're going to be looking at the cipher feedback algorithm mode so in the previous couple of videos in this entire playlist of information security we've been going through different types of algorithm modes so if you have missed the previous two videos wherein we discussed the electronic code book and the cipher block chaining you can check those videos in this playlist which I'll drop in the description and you can also see a card to that playlist on the top right corner so with that being said let's start off with today's topic that is cipher feedback algorithm mode so as the name suggest there is a feedback mechanism but in this mode things get a little bit complicated compared to the previous two modes that we've seen so in this mode data is encrypted in units that are smaller than a defined block size okay so since these are all block cipher algorithm modes they work on block of code right so let's say the block size is 64 now this cipher feedback basically works on smaller units of code compared to what the fixed size is okay so we'll see that in the diagram in a minute and this cfb which is cipher feedback mode works with j bits at a time and this number j is usually smaller than 64 bits okay so even if the block cipher size is set to 64 the encryption happens j bits at a time where j is usually smaller let's say j would be 8 or 16 or 24 or something like that okay so now let's see the entire working and there are certain prerequisites and some initial steps that happen before we actually see the entire diagrammatic overview of this cipher feedback mode so starting off with step number 1 so in step number 1 we take a initialization vector so this vector is just a random string which may be of 64 bits let's say the block size we've set is for 64 bits so this iv also known as initialization vector you've probably seen this in the previous video wherein we were discussing cipher block chaining so this is used just to add more randomness to the entire encryption process so what happens is we take this iv we encrypt using the key so the key also is 64 bit let's assume that so we perform encryption and we get the encrypted iv so this is step number 1 let's see what is step number 2 now here's where things get a little bit tricky so what happens is we first take the first j bits of the encrypted iv okay so let me just say that these are some bits so dot 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 and 64 bits we have 64 bits right of the iv so what happens is we are going to take first j bits of the encrypted iv so starting from the left let's say we are going to take first four bits okay we are just assuming we are going to take four bits then we take first j bits of the plain text so again we have our plain text okay so this is pt again in 64 bit blocks right so we take first j bits of the plain text so this is what we are taking we are performing an xor operation between the two so we are taking j bits of the encrypted iv we are taking j bits of the plain text and then we are getting the cipher text block 1 of j bits so ultimately what we get is some value let's say it's 1010 because xor operation between four bits will give us a result of four bits so let's assume that this is the result this is not actually the result you know you can actually see that if we take an xor operation the 01 will be 1 again 10 will be 1 01 will be 1 and 11 will be 0 so this is the actual result so let's assume we get this so now what happens so this is basically cipher text block 1 okay ct1 so you can see that this is not 64 bits right because we encrypted only first four bits so this is where i was saying that even though the block size is 64 bit we are taking smaller chunks and we are then encrypting it so let's see what happens in step number 3 so step number 3 is where the concept of shift registers comes into picture so what happens is we are performing left shift iv by j positions now this j we are assuming as 4 right so we are taking 4 bits at a time so what we have to do is we have to left shift the iv by j positions so this is our iv right so this is our iv so this is our iv over here so what we have to do is we have to left shift iv by j positions so we have to shift this iv four positions and then we have to start from over here okay so we used first four bits of the iv right so we have to exclude them and this would be the starting point for the next iteration so when we exclude these first four bits the iv will now become 60 bits right so initially it was 64 bits right so now it will become 60 bits and there would be four places at the rightmost side which will be left empty right because we are excluding four from the leftmost side so now 
in step 3 you can see this part we have to move j bits of ct1 into the rightmost side of iv so this ct1 that we got is supposed to be moved in this position okay so 0 triple 1 will be added to the rightmost side so we are eliminating 4 bits from the leftmost side then the iv becomes 60 bits so to make it 64 back we shift this ct1 that we got into the iv on the rightmost side so you can see move j bits of ct1 into the rightmost side so now we have a new iv right so now again it becomes 64 bits and for the next process we are going to start from this position so this is going to be the new iv and the first four bits would be this for the next iteration so now you are understanding what we are doing here right so for every iteration we are going to be performing left shift of the iv and then we are going to be adding the cipher text of the previous step to the rightmost side of the iv so that the iv remains 64 bits but every time the iv is changing for every step okay so i hope you are getting this entire process now let's try to understand this as a whole process okay so as you can see on the right hand side this is the complete process and you might think this is a bit complex but this is all these first three steps that we've done over here so first step we take the iv and we encrypt it using the key then we get the encrypted iv over here right so this was the step number one we got the encrypted iv so for step number two what we are doing we just take eight leftmost bits of the encrypted iv so the j value here is equal to eight so in the example before i assumed j as four but here we are taking eight leftmost bits of the encrypted iv so out of the 64 bits of the iv we are taking eight bits from the leftmost side we are taking plain text j bits so again this j is eight right so we are taking eight bits from the plain text and we're performing an xor operation and then we are getting cipher text j bits okay now what is happening is this step number three is happening over here that is this feedback you can see this blue line right so first the left shift of iv is happening by j positions and j here is eight so the iv is left shifted by eight positions that means that eight positions on the right are empty so those positions are filled by the cipher text of the first step and then this new iv is taken for the second step so again the iv is taken it is encrypted using the key so this step number one is happening then we get the encrypted iv at this step at this point we take eight leftmost bits of the encrypted iv we xor it with the eight bits of the plain text so this j stands for eight then we get the new cipher text then for the step number three the iv is again shifted by j positions to the left so it is shifted by eight positions to the left and then eight positions at the right are empty right so to fill those this cipher text is added or moved into the rightmost side of the iv and then again the same process continues till all the plain text bits are converted into corresponding cipher text bits so this was the entire process that was happening in cipher feedback mode and i know it sounds a little bit complex but i hope you get the gist now because every time there is a shift happening in the iv the initialization vector changes right so every time new encryption result will be found even if the plain text bits are the same the iv is always going to be changing right so the xor operation is always going to be changed so this is where that randomness is introduced using the feedback mechanism in cipher feedback mode so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood this entire process you can go back to step one step two and step three and see them individually and then you can come back to this entire diagram and i'm pretty sure you'll understand the entire process and that's it for this video guys if you like this video if you understood the entire process please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you like this video if you haven't yet subscribed on this channel guys please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications as well so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video tutorial on network security or information technology as a whole so i cover many other topics and thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace